Hello, welcome to the 1830. My name's Emma. I hope you've had a great week in the very cold Auckland weather. The rain has come and I'm feeling very jealous of my friends back home in the UK who are sunbathing on a beach right now while I'm digging out winter clothes. <laughs> But tonight we are continuing our Becoming series, following on from what Johnny shared with us last week on spiritual authority. And this evening, because it's Pentecost, the day when we remember the Holy Spirit being poured out on the early church, we are going to be looking at the Holy Spirit and what it means to become spirit-led. And I think this can be a source of difficulty for a lot of Christians because we think that it looks one way. And what we see in Acts is the Holy Spirit descending in what looks like tongues of fire on the believers and they speak in tongues and it all just looks a bit crazy. And people are looking in from the outside like, what the heck is going on? And for me, I've grown up always thinking that that is what the Holy Spirit means, that when the Holy Spirit comes, it looks crazy and... Um, it's kind of like this big thing and I've been at conferences where people kind of shake and fall to the ground but that's totally not been my experience and for years I really wrestled with this question of like do I even have the Holy Spirit like I've been baptized I've been confirmed I've asked for the Holy Spirit so many times but do I have the Holy Spirit because that's not what happens to me and I was always the person that if I went to a conference or an event where um, someone prayed for people to receive the Spirit or to have a real experience of the Spirit, I was like, yes, this is gonna be the time. This is gonna be the time where I'm gonna kind of like feel it in my body and I'd be at the end of a line where the speaker would maybe be going down and touching people's heads and people would be kind of falling over or um, just having these extreme kind of reactions and I'd be like oh it's coming it's coming and someone would put their hand on my head and bless me and absolutely nothing would happen and I used to feel really discouraged about that but what I've learned more recently actually is that the Holy Spirit speaks to us all in very different ways and that makes sense because God created us all completely differently completely unique We've got different personalities, different interests, different passions. And so, of course, it makes sense that he is going to speak to us in a way that connects with us personally. So tonight, I kind of want to celebrate the diversity of the ways in which the Spirit speaks to all of us as individuals. And I've asked a couple of members of our 1830 community to just tell us more about how they hear from the Spirit. And I hope tonight that this encourages you. I most frequently feel the Holy Spirit with me um, in my everyday interactions with other people. So, for example, in my work, if a child starts to get upset, I send up a quick prayer and then listen to the Holy Spirit's guidance about whether this is the time to try to make them laugh or distract them, sensitively address what's happening or empathize with maybe what's going on for them. However, there's also times um, of real joy and closeness with other people in which I feel the Holy Spirit taking joy with me or savoring the moment with me. Um, and that can be having a really good belly laugh with a friend, um, you know, when I'm spending time with my precious niece and nephew, um, or even, you know, listening to a friend as they, um, you know, tell me about what's going on for them. So those are the times that I most frequently feel the Holy Spirit's presence. I often hear from the Holy Spirit through creativity. In writing a poem or a song, I think expressing what's on my heart allows him to speak into that, um, but also through his creativity, whether I'm in nature or whether he's orchestrating for someone to say something to me at a particular time. Um, it could even be through a kid's movie, a quote that might strike me. And I love that because it's such a heart-to-heart -heart thing, like his father heart speaking to my child heart or his creative heart speaking to mine. Mel, do you want to just introduce yourself if people haven't met you before? Sure. Uh, 
Hi guys, I'm Mel, also Melody, if that's helpful to know. Yeah, um, yeah I've been coming along to St Paul's just over 10 years now and I love it. I'm normally part of the 1830 crew. Um, and yeah, if I haven't met you, I'd love to meet you sometime. And tonight in this episode, we're wanting to hear from lots of different people about their different experiences of the Holy Spirit and how they connect. Um, and so I'm intrigued to hear more <laughs> about you and your relationship with the Spirit. Mm. When would you say you first had an awareness of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, good question. Um, I honestly can't remember like a moment in time. Um, but I think one thing that does come to mind is when I was um, between the ages of 10 and 14, I moved to Nelson um, and got involved in this really amazing youth group and somehow ended up hanging out with my sister's friends that were like three years older than me. And I saw them as really good role models and somehow I ended up at their houses on Friday nights like just praying together. And um, I remember in those times like people having words of knowledge or words of encouragement for other people in the group mm -hmm. that were like really spot on. And I was like, what, what is going on? Like, how is this happening? You know? And so that, um, I guess, ignited like a intrigue in me to be like, oh, what is this? At a young age, like what's going on here? How does God speak? Um, yeah, and then through that, through in the word more, um, yeah, figured out that it was the Holy Spirit. You're like, aha, yeah. I put my finger on it now. <laughs> yeah. And wh what's happened with your relationship with the Spirit since those kind of teenage times? Yeah, good question. Um, I would just say that I, I really got um, passionate about reading the scriptures. Mm. I was hearing a lot of um, what was wrong with the church or what was you know this and that and I was like man I've got to find out for myself so I really um, yeah dug into reading the Bible myself and um, yeah realized that the Holy Spirit had actually talked about like a mm -hmm. truckload mm -hmm. all throughout it um, and yeah and so from that I think um, just this realization that I can really have um, a sense of yeah the Spirit being with me yeah. and um, that helping to guide my life and how I live. Mm. Yeah. So for you, it sounds like you experienced the Holy Spirit before you knew that it was the Spirit and what and what to call that. And then when you went to the Bible, you were like, oh my goodness, this must be what it is. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It, it was definitely like a bit of a combo, like yeah. growing up in a Christian family and having parents that mm. would talk about it. There was definitely that aspect. Um, but yeah, yeah, personally, yeah, in those times of prayer with my with my sister's friends mm -hmm. being like oh what is going on here and then yeah putting the pieces together and um and then having different experiences over time mm -hmm. and that word can mean different things for different people um yeah mm -hmm. and i know for a number of people i've spoken to before and for me myself um often a big question with the holy spirit is how do i know when it's the spirit speaking and mm -hmm. when it's just me like how can i tell if i'm hearing god or i'm not Mm. What would you say on that? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a definitive answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone does. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, um, I'll just pull out my Bibles. So here oh, goes. just um, strategically placed. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, because Scripture is, I think, definitely, like, a good measure of, like, you know, if the Spirit is speaking, mm. if you know, like, the Word, or if at least read it, um, even if you don't, like, fully comprehend it. Like, there's always, the Word is alive and active, and it's always going to, be um, teaching new things to us but in John um, 14 it says that um, like Jesus is talking to his disciples and mm -hmm. saying um, when the father sends a counsellor as my representative and by the counsellor I mean the Holy Spirit he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I myself have told you mm -hmm. um, so I think like the Spirit's work is to remind us of what Jesus did on earth what he represented um, how he fulfilled like prophecies from the Old Testament, the way he lived, the way he interacted with people, mm. um, yeah, how he healed people, how he forgave people, how he challenged people, mm. things like that. So I think like the word is like a really good measure of of knowing, you know, the spirit. And then sometimes, for example, um, I might like sense that the spirit is saying something to me, and I might be like, oh, that's a bit like. <laughs> left field like it might be like oh go and talk to that person and encourage them in this way or whatever pray for healing for that person i'm like oh you know um, <laughs> i want to yeah and there's a verse in the bible that says like don't grieve the holy spirit by the way that you live your life so mm. i want to be in tune with that but also i still have a 
opportunity whether I respond to that or not. Mm. And I want to say, like, in the responding to it, sometimes you get it wrong. Like, yeah. I might be like, hey, Emma, like, and give you some word, and you're like, mm, no, <laughs> you know? And you're testing it against what you know about the word as well. And for me to hold that has been okay. Mm. Um, but I think, yeah, the spirit is edifying and is your counsellor. Well, thank you. I think that's really encouraging and some great tips to kind of be reading our Bibles and be knowing the voice of God through that, but also just stepping out in boldness as well. And if we feel a prompt and it lines up with scripture to be like, I'm just going to step out and go for it. And the very worst that can happen is maybe we get it a bit wrong and we feel a bit embarrassed, but the very best that can happen is actually we get it right and it really lands for someone and encourages them. Yeah. And I think even it can be in for your own life as well. Mm. Like, um, yeah, definitely that. And then like, for example, this week I felt to pray for someone that I was like quite frustrated with and I just really felt the spirit be like I just want you to pray and bless them and I was like nope <laughs> and then like the longer I sat with the thing it just like was strong and I was like and so I just started to let words come out and as I did like I was just like I was being faithful like obedient mm. to what God is actually calling us to love one another and to be gracious towards one another and I think even the confessing like through our mouth <clears throat> um, that truth can sometimes like help shift things and that's also the spirit's work yeah responding to those niggles yeah and acting on them. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us yeah no it's been really helpful yeah <laughs> so our next guest on the 1830 is the one and only oscar bowman hello welcome hello. and thank you for joining us this evening yeah. straight after work as well mm-hmm. um oscar tell people who maybe don't know you or haven't met yeah. you before who you are how long you've been at St. Paul's for. Yeah. Um, I've been at St Paul's for a while now, uh, quite a while. Quite a while. Quite a while. Um, I've been here since Crange basically, so like since kind of Mark and Bex and the, and the gang came over, I was one of the babies that came along in the the mall that I came across from London. So yeah. And he's just grown since. Yeah. Um, so Oscar, tonight we're looking at becoming spirit led mm-hmm. and what it's like to listen to the Holy Spirit. When you hear the name Holy Spirit, what comes to mind for you? Um, I feel like with, with me, it's like it's kind of a lot of strange thing because I think my, it's like well, first of all, it's like it's like it's like life force and it's kind of like you know this thing that's everywhere, but also um, I don't know, it's 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 God, but I don't know it's because it, it's kind of kind of kind of like a mysterious thing we always hear about, but it's, over time like you kind of get to know if you, like who it is, I guess. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So when you say mysterious thing that you get to know, at um, what point do you think in your journey with God did you start to get to know the Holy Spirit? Um, well, I think that uh, when the first time I experienced it myself mm. was, uh, I was pretty young, I think around maybe intermediate age. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at some conference, I was pretty like, intimidated by because they're all pretty, they're pretty happy clappy and quite... <laughs> Technical like, oh. term, happy clappy. Yeah, and quite, you know, intense and kind of lights show and everything, so... Um, but yeah, it was good. Uh, I, the guy was just praying, and I was like, "Oh, what's that?" You know, um, and so that was pretty cool. And I, and I was kind of I remember, I remember asking the dude, the kind of young pastor. Um, I was like, well, "You know what? This, I had this kind of weird feeling about crying and laughing. It was just weird." He was like, oh, "That's the power of God, man." I remember going, "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, remember, I got it. But I remember I remember just like hearing that for the first time. And being like, oh, "Okay, cool. Like that's that's power of God." Mm. And did it feel weird the first yeah, time you experienced it? Yeah, it was weird. It was yeah. like, oh, okay, this is like something like other here, yeah, so it was cool. Okay. Yeah. And so since that age, intermediate, has your relationship with the Holy Spirit and how you tune into that mm. kind of mysterious being yeah. changed? Yeah, quite a bit. I mean, like, it's cool, like, when people pray for you and, uh, you know, you hear words and things. So I guess, I guess a lot of it was kind of experiencing for other people and kind of like mm. having them pray for me and then kind of, you know, that was always cool. Like I always, I always got some amazing pictures of people, which I'm very grateful for. I see some dude at church did a talk once, can't remember his name, about the <laughs> Holy Spirit, and it, and it was also it was quite cool for me, like hearing, uh, hearing he was he was talking about it as a person, because okay, you because yeah. you always think of the Jesus and the Father as a person, mm. you kind of think of the Holy Spirit as just like some kind of ethereal kind of thing that kind of just is, exists on earth mm. but um it was cool hearing it in that sense like oh it is part of the, the tri the triune god of you know of the of the trinity and so thinking about it as a, as, a, as you know it is a person that you can connect with you know that also happens to be the father of jesus because mm. christianity or uh, <laughs> just complicated complicated <laughs> uh 
Yes, that was cool. And, and, and thinking of Holy Spirit as a person definitely helped. For you, you talked earlier about having that experience when you were in mm. the intermediate of kind of like getting the shakes and mm. stuff and not knowing what that was until that point. Mm. How would you say you connect most with the Holy Spirit now? Mm. Um, well, honestly, because I'm in the worship team and I've, I've done that for ages now, like, mm. again, since that kind of time, I think it was intermediate, mm-hmm. when Chris started the youth band, I think, like, I think I've, I've, uh, I've developed quite a relationship to go through music. Mm. And so I love singing in front of people and leading worship and everything. And I think often that's kind of the way I, yeah, relate to God. For you, what happens in worship? Like, mm. um, I think that just, uh, like worship is a time when it's literally the entire congregation inviting God. Mm. It's a very powerful thing. And so it's, it's I don't know, I feel like, the, and, and I always have like memories of certain songs on certain days where like God really showed up. And I was like, oh, more fuzzy feeling because it's like, it, it, it's like I think I think it's just you just get surrounded by love, basically. Mm. It's this amazing feeling. So like actually, really connecting with the power mm. and the feeling of the spirit. You described it as love as well. Like yeah. you, there was like a feeling of love in the yeah. room. What would you say to someone who really struggles with the idea of the Holy Spirit and just isn't sure if they ever hear from the Holy Spirit? Mm. I, I, but I do think that like um, you know, some people who don't hear from God, if you know. Just pray about it more, I guess. Or like some people just don't get that emotional. No. Like Mike Pelabachi, is, is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. He, like, at Easter Camp one year, he was talking about how like you know some people just don't get that emotional. If you're an emotional person, chances are you'll start crying, you know, mm. or if you're or laughing or whatever. But um, but but then I also get people that say you know like, they don't really experience much, but it's like they're still they're still faithful in mm. a way that's like more impressive in some ways. <laughs> like mm. um, if you still have faith, you know, because blessed are those who didn't have not seen me but still believe kind of thing. In the same way of the Holy Spirit, they say those who don't really get emotional cry or, mm. or, yeah, I guess. I think that's a really good point as well because from what you're saying there, uh, you talked about you're quite someone who likes worship, you've been in the worship mm. band for a long time, mm. and God speaks to you through worship mm. and prayer. And if you're an emotional person, God often speaks to people through mm. emotions. And I think that's a really interesting thing to note as well that the Holy Spirit knows us mm. as people yeah. and actually connects with us on a level that we understand. Um, and so often actually tuning into the things that naturally are you, Mm. whether that's worship, nature, Mm. prayer, Mm. scripture, um, and finding God there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All good. (laughs) We're just going to pray now as we come into land. So you might want to close your eyes, just still yourself and just pause for a minute. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just come and reveal yourself now. Thank you for all the different ways that you are already at work in our lives. Thank you that you speak to us as individuals. And God, we ask that you would awaken us, open our eyes to what you're already doing and will do. And Father, we ask that you would send us out this week in the power of your Holy Spirit that we would be your hands and feet. In Jesus' name, amen. So over the the last seven weeks, we've obviously been looking at how we can become more like Jesus as individuals. But from next week, we will be launching a new series as a church on how we can become like Jesus as a community. Um, We'll be looking at the early church in Acts and doing a series on Acts. So join us next week, not online, but in person. I'm so excited. Uh, We'll be back in our building on Simon Street and we'll have four services across the Sunday at nine o'clock and 11 o'clock and then at four and six. And you'll be able to sign up for those online so that we're able to adhere to the restrictions of up to 100 people gathering. So look out for more information in your emails and online this week. Uh, But I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that has got involved with these 1830 videos, people who have sent in things, um, who've shared their thoughts and who have written talks as well. It is unbelievably difficult uh, doing content into into a camera. 
and I am really excited to not be looking at the lens of a camera anymore and to be seeing your lovely faces next week. So look forward to seeing you in person and have a great week. Bye.